Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, and it's dark because it's 5.45 a.m. And what am I gonna do today? We're gonna take a look at Ethereum, Bitcoin. We're gonna take a look at some of that price action, some of the liquidation levels. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the broader market, uh, you know, going across NASDAQ, dollar, gold. We're gonna jump into these charts and take a look at some trade setups and talk about uh, potentially what is happening right before our very eyes as it looks like a pretty do droopy price action on the 15 minute time frame. I'd say as long as we're below that wick, pressure is on the downside. And by taking out this nice little hammer candle with a nice red volume closed below, this is either a trap or it, 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 it and a bit of a bull flag. And we're gonna head up to the higher liquidation levels or the bearish bias is gonna be confirmed crossing down below 1640 on the next 15 minute time frame. What is the hourly says? Droopy, as long as we're below these high value uh, candles right here, this nice magenta one, um, you know, looks like it was recovered. So if we break down below 1622, well, I believe there's some liquidation levels still down there at 1563 and uh, putting in a nice sell on the hourly time frame for the moment here and we do have you know kind of a low volatility consolidating right there and as we are putting in lower highs and lower lows i'd expect a bit of a trend reversal however you know by closing anywhere above this pivot at 16 call it 1700 bucks looking for big moves up to the upside and uh that you know Level is probably around 1800 bucks if we are going to do the full retrace back to the upside. Because I realize looking at things on the 15 minute time frame is not always uh, the best thing to do. But uh, this is pretty tough price action, guys, if you're trading this. Um, I'm going to get rid of my box there. That was the weekend box. We broke below it. Pressure is remaining to the downside. As I've mentioned, Ethereum is a bit of an easier chart to look at. Let's take a look at the liquidation map here for Bitcoin. And as pressure is onto the downside, you know, could we get a quick spike up to 26, 450, even 27,000 before they send it down? Yes, but liquidation levels 25,100 and uh, 23,550. Kind of getting this feeling overall that uh, if the market makers are going to push price down, they're going to do it probably pretty quick. It's probably going to be, you know, in and out. Um, I don't think we'll dance around. I think we'll get a big wick down there. And um, yeah, just just giving him my kind of gut feeling there. Isn't TA, isn't uh, financial advice there, but more of a gut instinct there. And if we look at the liquidation levels, huge one up here at 26,420. And down here at uh, 25 one. So as you can see, even on the price action here, it does line up for a bounce at 253650, which I think we actually already took out that liquidity. Let's see. So we've got about 128 million worth of 100x liquidations coming in at 2536. 25,365, so potential for a bounce there, but I do believe either way they send it, it's gonna be a big move probably. Um, and a pretty big range overall, I could see us kind of just drafting between this range for some time as uh, what happens after the big, big move. Well, you get a bit of a boring price action move. And um, that's sideways. That's the trader's market. Anyways, back on to the chippy charts here. And the 15 minute is producing a bit of a sell signal for me here. Not quite, not quite. Actually, the sell was back here. And that is why we uh, did take a little short position. And targeting a move down, 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 down. Um, down to that next liquidation level, down at uh, 1622. Let's check out Ethereum really quick. Let's check out ETH on this chart here. If we know, you know, 
If we know, you know. Um, you can see actually most of the liquidity got taken out to the downside. So could we get a quick punch up with Ethereum, maybe up to 1700, 1720? I mean, look at all that liquidity up there. So a lot of people are gonna get wrecked. Um, and a big push, volatile push up at about 1850 if Ethereum is gonna run. Um, that's kind of what I'd be looking for, uh, for, you know, short-term upside potential and then above 2000 and well, uh, things are going to get moving pretty quick and levels to the downside, 1340 to the downside, 1510 and 1340. So 1510 and 1340, I guess I'm going to write the new level down here. Just to keep my eyes on them, uh, 1510 and 1340. Okay, that's it on Mr. Ethereum's and uh, putting in a silly long signal there. I don't know if I enjoy that one, sir, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and look at it when we're done here. And yeah, as long as I mean, you can see this M formation. Looks like Bitcoin is gonna head back to the bottom side of the range on the hourly. Perfect spit back down and you've got the, uh, well, the, is that an M formation? Let's see if it's more easily seen on the 15 minute time frame. And yes, it is. So what does an M formation, reversal formation do? Boom, 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 lower high. And you'd expect that to be the case if it doesn't just sloop right down right now in the 15 minute gap zone, which all the major moves have occurred in this area over, you know, the weekend. Oh, entering the long signal. That's not what I want to see. But um, sometimes it's better not to fight the indicator. Why? Well, this thing has a 76% hit rate. So um, not looking for a big actually uh, move here. Short term move. So um, short term bounce. 0.47 is usually what I'm going for. So if we entered the long on this candle, um, 0.47, where does that get you? About up to the 21. So that's what I would suspect. Maybe gonna tap the bottom side of the box, the weekend trap box, and then um, do something like that. That is a trend continuation to the downside. We almost had a reversal on our hands with a higher high and a higher low, but uh, nope. The M came back and did it to us again. So same thing on Ethereum here. I'm going to pull up my ETH chart. ETH. Which I wanted to see if we had any hourly bearish divergence, which is confirmed on that last hourly closure. Had a nice candle close with volume. Uh, pretty much as long as we we're below that 1642 pivot now, I think uh, pressure's on to the downside for Ethereum. But uh, specifically this wick here, you know, as long as we don't take out the wick, well, um, looking good for short term move to the downside, heading down to that liquidation level. Let's see if I can see that again really quick. And yeah, short-term liquidity, 25.1 on Bitcoin and uh, ETH is going to be. And remember, uh, you know, altcoins are going to do more, whatever Bitcoin does, <laughs> more than whatever Bitcoin does uh, to the upside and the downside if it is, well, to the upside if it's a strong coin and to the downside if it is a weak coin. But the next major level, 15, 10, and what you will notice is these uh, levels back here, which before uh, the big move happened, right? We were in this zone and we just shot right through that liquidity. So do we shoot right through this liquidity and punch down to 1340? Just something to be aware of. Um, and then maybe a potential buying opportunity for Mr. Ethereum. Let's see if that lines up on the chart with any of our major trend lines and a lot of people a lot a lot of people out there drawing this uh, massive ascending triangle 
ascending, which have, I think, a 75% chance of a breakout to the upside. About a 75% chance. Some might say it's already broken, but I would not. I would not say it's broken yet. Why you need a candle body closure below that level. And um, this is on a bit yet. Let's see what... Well, we got our levels nice and marked out from yesterday. To the upside, to the downside. Getting Oh, getting rid of the box. And essentially anywhere back above these wicks, you know, for Ethereum is going to look good for, you know, reclaiming this area at about 1777. Um, this is a point of interest up here that I'd be looking at. Um, Okay, moving on with some more thoughts here on Ethereum for shorter term downside. And again, if you do see these things start to twist down the uh, 21 and the green 55 exponential, going to be a good indicator that uh, we're going to roll on over. Um, yeah, that's it out of me today, guys. I think that is it. Um, do we want to check in on any altcoins? Algo, yes. Uh, looking for this one to head back to the bottom side of the range. I'm glad I pointed this one out because I may want to just take a position here. Um, as we don't have a perfect M, but uh, close enough is close enough, some would say, as this looks like a swing failure pattern. We had a slight closure above and a complete rejection. So um, let's pull that one up in my chart here. Just a second. As Algorand, Gary Gensler pretty much ruined this one. Call it a day, Mr. Gary V. Tom H. Bar Rune. The big losers for the day, Rune, uh, getting getting slacked and this one is ready to dump so i'm gonna i'm gonna grab some on the on the short side mr justin bieber yes you can hit the red button and it will serve you uh, very nicely very very nice okay da -da ding that's the sound of making money. Anyways, uh, longer stream today. Want to give those thoughts on the broader market so that, um, well, here's the case for the bulls, actually. The case for the bulls, look at that volume buildup, consolidation. Jerome Powell is going to be speaking on fire day for the Jackson Hole Summit. And yes, what does that mean for the rest of us and our... Our, our, our measly little lives here. Well, if Jerome Powell comes out and says, hey, look, we're probably gonna, we're probably gonna end up raising rates a couple more times this year and the economy's way too strong. Oh, Bitcoin taking a dive down to our target. Notice how these liquidation levels tend to play out. Well, this one, $276 million right there. Um, that is not the level that these are the levels. This is probably wick down to uh, 25,365. And I'm going to write these down for myself. 25,365. Remember, this is on Binance where the most volume is. So it's going to be different on various exchanges. So you got 108 million at 24,587. And what else should we look at? Maybe Bitcoin dominance, maybe Tether dominance is going to give us a little bit more uh, information on whether or not we should uh, continue to enjoy. Uh, well, the just easy glide down. Well, I guess that thing is... Algorand is taking a minute to fill all those orders. 
Okay, we're gonna have to delete that off the video anyways. Um, turning the volume down. What is going on with this thing? Algorand. Anyways, uh, back onto Bitcoin and uh, yeah, you can see momentum heading down here. And again, the dead gaps uh, right here to the upside, you can see they jammed it to the upside, to the downside. And what do they do uh, during the US market session open, right? So economic data coming out today was <laughs> S&P Global Manufacturing, which is apparently, well, we're gonna take a look here. It's going down, it's going up. Inflation's getting worse, guys. It's not getting better, okay? Inflation is getting worse. It's not getting better. Don't you see the Fed pal? I just saw another clip of Janet Yellen out there. And what was she saying? I even wrote it down, I think. Something about, oh, um, you know, things are healthy and we don't expect a recession. That's what she said. So Jackson Hole is today, 23rd at... 10 hours and 58 minutes from now. So six o'clock, no. I don't know if my brain's working this early in the morning here, guys, but um, this is exciting to see, exciting to see. Anyways, two year FRN auction, S&P Global Services. If this does come out hotter than expected, well, inflation's not working out. So, uh, that's it for today. Tomorrow, tomorrow, jobless claims, durable goods, and let's check in on Dixie and NASDAQ really quick. And the point for the bulls I was talking about, NVIDIA reports earnings after this morning, or sorry, after the market closes today. Convenient how they do it after the market closes. And a lot of the tech stocks are selling off M formation. We're just looking for another lower high here, anywhere lower than these highs and it's going to be trend continuation lower highs and lower lows on the daily time frame how would you reverse the trend you need a higher high and a higher low right and the weekly um and very easily what can happen nvidia pumps the market all the ai coins run one more time do i think that's the case probably not probably not as you know michael burry is too short right now and the vix is you know, look, it looks like it's putting in a nice little low there. So hidden bullish divergence coming back from that pivot. Probably going to get a run up to the top side of the range or that green 55 at a minimum. Um, all right. Do I have anything else for you, ladies and gentlemen? I think I am touched on everything. Inverted yield curve. Let's check in on the bond market and Dixie. Sorry. Dixie making its way up. Looking girthy, looking strong. And we did... Call it back here. I mean, after reclaiming the range right here on this candle, we said, hey, probably gonna bounce it up to the upside. We said, look, trend line breaks, okay. Next trend line breaks, okay. And now heading up to the green box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, which is this guy. And as long as we can stay below that box, well, we're probably okay. And uh, above that box, well, it's gonna be, uh, you know, a nasty, nasty little uh, second quarter, third quarter, whatever you wanna call it, fourth quarter of the year, going to the first year of next year. It sounds like that's when the recession's supposed to come, first quarter of next year. But um, who, you know, that's just the talking heads out there. All the guys that said there's gonna be a recession earlier this year, third quarter, they were talking about third quarter recession. Apparently it's not here. NASDAQ's up, jobs are up, and inflation is coming down. So the Fed says, all right, I'm done for today. Guys, have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. We'll bring back some more price action tomorrow. And let me know in the comments below if you got a question or you want to know, you got a coin you want me to cover. Take care.